That's a whole lot of talk, Hot Rod. You think those flames and that fancy spoiler make you faster? You want to race? Let's race. Most of the time, I have seen recently a lot of games these days collabing with Transformers franchise. Like, for example, Fortnite and Overwatch. It is nice we are seeing skins of our favorite characters in a FES game, but you have to think how much the Transformers franchise and video games have changed much since Activision took off all their games from the library because of their license issue expired. I have always said to myself, I would not download these type of games again unless you bring in Rodimus. So why do I say this to gaming companies, even though he's a very obscure character to normies, but everyone in the franchise knows who he is? Technically, in the most recent game that actually came out, aren't skins is Transformers Expedition that came out late 2023. Which that, that game's kind of received mediocre reviews, and myself included. It is there, and it's nice gameplay and easy on the button of fly transforming, but it really does lack replay value. There is way too much open space, and not even there's not many worlds, and there's no online play, which makes the game repetitive and boring. Also, if you want to do your wombo combo moves you bought from the shop. You can't because the how the button placement isn't as the same. Let's say a similar combo attack to B's uh, move set in Earth Spark Expedition. Your attacks get override by your first combo when you want to do a similar attack to Dante's motorbike pressing, as it rewards you for delaying your attacks to upgrade your style meter. Playing DMC five games is better to consume than Earth Spark Expedition. We have to think about that this game is the first set of new games since Activision pulled the plug and lost the IP, and to be fair, the only game you can buy off from the shop. I also want to tell you guys, I have softlocked myself in this game and broke my save file halfway through in the second world. Yeah, I wasn't too happy on that though. I kind of did scream a little bit when I had to redo entire save file. You want to know the worst thing that I have done to myself? I platinum the game just because it was too easy. At least it is not as bad as Del May Cry 2 because that game is barely unplayable unless you want to use Albonian Ivory the entire time mashing away at enemies. That game was Dante and Lucia. Why do I do this to myself? Ah, uh, yes. Though the idea was there for DMC 2, there's a lot of things you can take away from DMC 2 like the story and its meaning, as someone's video on YouTube described this better than me, as it it does change my appreciation for the game, but it doesn't change my perspective on DMC2, as I still believe the gameplay and the story needed more time to cook. It does say a lot as I'm going to talk about Hot Rod from Transformers G1. It is how general perspective on his character at the time was hated, but now became a beloved character within the franchise. Hello, this is Vibespires here with a short video on Hot Rod, as well as a little bit on Rodimus Prime from Transformers G1. We are not going into the comics as it is a series of its own can of worms that I, want, that I don't want to open as I plan on making a video for the comics later. That being said, let's get on to the video. Also noted, there would be some Terret slash Arcana comparison to Hot Rod's story. So if you enjoy that kind of comparison, just let me know in the comments below. Hot Rod, along as other new characters, RC, Springer, Cup, and etc., were all meant to replace the full cast of characters to our original cast that grew up watching the show in 84. They have two seasons already with our old cast, and how would they not fu- Oh god. They had to kill a star scream off? How could he done this? Who greenlit this? Who wrote this? And let the animation drew their deaths in the worst way possible. But hey, at least Sandwave's okay. Like, damn. I remember back when I was a kid, I heard rumors about this movie when it came out in theaters in 86. A lot of parents left the first 15 minutes of the film because not only do you show off character deaths, but also the show accidentally made these characters icons. 
These poor kids watching this in 86 must be traumatized seeing their beloved character die on the big screen. Which I kind of understand that feeling and a lesson learned from show writers. In my opinion, this stuff is awesome, as they must have the confidence to rebrand all the toys and thinking people would follow the next line of toys. That stuff is risky, and I don't think no movie for children has ever pulled it off again. Nevertheless, the final fight between Optimus and Megatron is just top tier. It is, inevitably, that the two will never succeed, or being able to see the individual die before they do. It just shows how equal the two are and will die on the same day. But we're getting off topic here. Hot Rod sort of introduced himself as a new trainee for the Autobot cause. However, Hot Rod lacks the control of his willingness to sacrifice for the greater good. As we see Hot Rod's personality as arrogant and naive. Since he's a lot younger than most characters compared to the other Autobots, he dons on the childlike personality as he doesn't have any experience and put his trust towards luck and logic. Much like the fool being upright from Terret, we see Hot Rod as this upbeat, innocent Cybertronian who is great, who has great potential and later mold Hot Rod in becoming a new leader that Optimus is trying to curate from the beginning. Because Optimus knows Hot Rod isn't ready to take up the responsibilities as a prime and gives it to Alta Magnus for safekeeping, but then it forgets to tell him that tell him that because he was dying. We started off with death and despair of planet eating and a lot of beloved characters' death to the Decepticons. Too lighthearted, mundane, and simple. Throughout the beginning of the movie, we do not start with Optimus. We we start but with Hot Rod fishing with Spike's son. Hot Rod is overlooking the water as he fished out, but when he catches one, it is small and young. With this scene with Hot Rod reflects who he is without telling us why. It's enough to tell us that Hot Rod has the opportunity to grow and bloom into the character he doesn't know yet. Yet, he can accept this moment as bliss from the complicated algebra core from the previous scene. We can enjoy the scene with bright, fresh eyes with two new young characters fishing together before they had to face chaos and destruction together. When the Decepticons went ahead and attack, Hot Rod is arrogant and isn't heartless as he promised to keep to protect the humans and his friend, which I love him so much that his first appearance on screen gave him the potential for writers to change his character later on. That is what Hot Rod is. He is the underdog, and we're seeing from the beginnings of what he does and what he stands for. Now, on to the death of Optimus Prime. In the movie, we see that it was Hot Rod's fault, getting Optimus severely injured by Megatron in the previous battle. Optimus knows he isn't long for this world and says his goodbyes and giving hope to those who are still around during the darkest hour. Optimus basically accepted his fate, as we know in Transformers Devastation. We know he fears what will happen when he's gone, and knows he will be gone before Unicron shows up. The computer predicted his fate tells him that his friends will face and win the darkest hour, but not with him. As this seems sad, it's Optimus's reply that he's okay of dying in order to save his friends, because he knows his friends will be okay without him. It gives satisfaction and accepting his death as a humble warrior. We have to understand that things don't ever last forever. However, the 86 kids never got that opportunity as their perspective at the time was their beloved father-like character dying and turns black and gray when he gives the Matrix away. There are times a lot of people won't accept the, the truth as we want things to be the same. It is a blissful way to enjoy for this bit a while longer. A death with someone you know and love will always come. It is hard on yourself because you're still around, but not them. Hot Rod represents our standing character for us as we grieve this loss. However, he is now trying to accept this new reality after the original cast is now dead after the last Decepticon battle. But hey, I can accept Grinlock and Perceptor still being around. Anything is better without these tiles dying. Woo! 
Anyways, Optimus drops the Matrix for Hot Rod to catch in time, and it glowed a blue hue and opened a little bit, only for Ultra Magnus to take it for the time being, but thought he could able to open it. However, it was Hot Rod that the Matrix reacted. Hot Rod gives it away as he doesn't feel worthy of the relic's importance, but he's willing to do whatever it is right to honor Optimus in any way by fighting the evils. He pairs up with Cup, an older Cybertronian, perhaps the last oldest Autobot that is still around and giving wisdom to Hot Rod. Even though it was his guild that Optimus died in his hands, going on this hero's journey brings life anew. Sometimes death brings out the end of things, but needed in order to establish new relationships. The hole is still there within Hot Rod, but also, in death, helps his story understand his needs to move on and evolve himself to become a prime he's meant to be. He eventually does that right at the end of the movie and found his worth while fighting Galvatron. He accepted his burden as the new bearer of the Matrix of leadership, now blossomed into Rodimus Prime. He gained knowledge from his previous primes and heard the voice of Optimus again, as he evolved from a punk teenager to a maturing adult. He defeats the Darkest Hour alongside with his friends, and he will do anything to protect them and protect in the weak. He brings in the hope that everyone once lost and light through the darkness. Hot Rod, depending on your perspective, as I said in the beginning of the video, how writers have the power to write off a character's death, but also write a story that inspires those to keep going, no matter how hopeful it is. Much like the DMC franchise, DMC 2 was a terrible, lackluster game, but also had good ideas on paper. Yet it birthed my favorite game in the series, Del May Cry 3. Whatever the case is, Hot Rod's character in G1 series after the movie sort of became a laughingstock in Season 3 of the show as the writers scrambled to fix their mistakes killing off their beloved characters in the most brutal way and less honorable. They tried to do that, but they shouldn't bring back Optimus all in Season 3. It, it basically ruined his character and what he actually stood for. Luckily, they fixed that in the IDW comics. Though it's its own universe, it does take off some storyline from the G1 part and giving the send off to some of the characters they deserved. That is all for you, as Rodimus Prime is ironically my favorite character in the series and in the entire franchise, even though I have so many Starscream videos at this point. Rodimus Prime is a golden retriever and brings off good vibes from every time he shows up. I hope you're doing well. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.